April 2014 at the Perry Center Aquaculture and Fisheries uh, Department here at Bellingham Technical College. I'm going to do a demonstration here showing how we can access some of our wireless heart data through a laptop computer connected to our network. So if we follow the network cable here into the cabinet, we see inside the cabinet we have a Netgear 8-port Ethernet hub, and this forms the center of our Ethernet network. The cables on the left-hand side go out to various points in the Perry Center building. We've got a cable running through the Wet Lab PLC network. We've got a cable going to a smart wireless gateway, which is how we get the wireless heart data into this network to be viewable by the HMI panel and by our laptop. Our laptop's plugged into this port right here, giving us access. So all we need to do is set up the IP address and subnet of our laptop to make sure it's compatible, and we're good to go. So I've done that already. <coughs> what I would first want to show you is how we connect to the HMI touchscreen panel so we can view what is being shown on the panel from this remote location. The HMI touchscreen is an Automation Direct Seymour unit and it has a really nice feature in it called Remote Access. It has a web server built in. If you configure it, you can log in using a normal web browser. But I'm going to do that here. You just have to know the IP address of the panel. So you just type that in and you get this screen and one of the options is Remote Access. Click on remote access here and tell it I do not have a firewall or a router. And then what I do is I have to run an application that gives me live access to the panel. Uh, type in a password and name, and I'm in. So just one more moment and we'll see it display. What we see right here is on the home page of that HMI panel. As I move the mouse around and click on various buttons, it's the same thing as clicking on those buttons at the panel in real life. So if I click on the wet lab button, that brings us over here to the wet lab screen, and I can see my banks of egg trays where they do the egg incubation and all the data coming from our PLCs. I can also go back to the overview or home screen here and see that. And you can see on this screen the various uh, displays I have for the wireless heart instrumentation. So this gives you an overview of the work we've recently completed with students. We have six wireless heart transmitters, all talking to a wireless heart gateway located at the Perry Center. So Pond Zero is where the water comes in from Watton Creek through a pipe into Pond Zero. There's a submersible pump that pumps water to the Perry Center wet lab for the egg incubation trays. There's overflow from Pond Zero that goes into the other ponds, Ponds 1, 2, 3, and 4. The ponds 3 and 4 are connected by a channel. This is essentially our fish ladder. When the fish come back here in the fall, they come up the ladder, and they're trying to get back home, and they get trapped in this area where they can uh, harvest the fish for the eggs and the milt. Here in ponds 1 and 2, these are fish-rearing ponds where they'll put the small fish in there, feed them, and have them grow prior to release to the ocean. We also have an ambient air temperature reading here, and we also have another temp transmitter reading the temperature of the creek itself up, uh, upstream of the waterfall where we take the water in for the hatchery. So we're monitoring these six different temperatures, uh, not necessarily because these are critical to know, they're useful, but they're not, not critical to know, but mostly just to give the instrumentation students an opportunity to apply what they've been learning to uh, a working environment. All these transmitters are Rosemount Model 648, donated directly by Rosemount, by request. Uh, they came to us and asked how they could support the program, and we said, boy, it sure would be nice to have a lot of wireless heart instrumentation, and they delivered on that request. So we're very thankful to Rosemount, and uh, Tom Mosier in particular, the president, who authorized that request. And so we've installed instruments here that they donated to us last summer. These are all Rosemount Model 648s using 100 ohm platinum RTDs for measuring the temperature. And the one at Watkin Creek is the most challenging installation because it's located the furthest away from the Perry Center over a small rise in the landscape and also through some trees. It has the weakest signal of all. And we installed the ambient air temperature transmitter here primarily in that location to act as a repeater for the creek temperature transmitter. And as we'll see in another video, uh, the ambient air temperature transmitter is not actually in the best location to act as a repeater, but at least we're finding that out now. But for now, you can see the data from these transmitters. 51 degrees off the creek, uh, 54 degrees here at pond zero, 52, 53, 53 degrees at the other ponds, and an ambient temperature of 59. And that's the data we're seeing off of the HMI screen. Uh, later, we're going to do additional screens on the HMI where we can actually uh, touch any of these temperatures and we can see graphic displays, uh, I should say, um, graphing trends over time showing the rises and the falls uh, over a period of days or, or perhaps even weeks. 
So we're going to uh, add that to the HMI's functionality later on. But for right now, we just have these displays that update uh, integer numerical data, and we can see what it reads out.